Hi there, guys, and welcome to News in English with Tutor Tom for Monday, the 2nd of October 2023. It's a new month. It's a new week. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We've got a fantastic article to start the week off with. It's all about social media. Now, I want to talk about social media because pretty much all of my students use social media, whether that's in America using Facebook, um, whether that's in Asia using WeChat in China, for example. Um, everyone is using social media. So it's a massively important part of our daily lives. But like anything, there are pros and cons, positives and negatives about social media. This article is about is about the potential negative sides of using social media too much. So it's a really interesting uh, article, which is quite a lengthy article. So it's going to be quite challenging for you. But it's Monday. And it's always good to start the new week with a challenge. So let's get in it and then let's get into it. And then at the end, I want to encourage you to leave some comments about your thoughts and your own personal experiences using social media. I've started to see some comments coming through now, which is great to see. I'm interacting with those comments and and people are learning from those comments as well and those interactions. So please get involved with the comments. Let me hear your thoughts because it's brilliant for your English practice. OK, so the title of the article is The People Going Monk Mode to Limit Social Media Use. When she really needs to focus on her work, Susie Allegre uses an app on her phone that blocks her access to social media sites for however long she requires. Miss Allegre, a human rights lawyer and author based in London, says shutting off in this way enables her to better concentrate because it stops her from getting distracted. I think it's incredibly hard by willpower alone to have a smartphone and not waste a significant amount of time on it, she says. The app Miss Allegri uses is called Freedom. You can choose to block specific social media sites and websites or turn off internet access entirely. You pick how long you want the blocking to last for in hours and minutes. You can subsequently change your mind about this and cancel it early. Or alternatively, you can tick the locked mode button, which then means that your block cannot be overridden until the time you scheduled is up. Miss Allegre adds that she uses the Freedom app as opposed to simply turning off her handset. When I need to be contactable on the phone, but I really don't want to be distracted, is why she uses it. Similar blocking apps now include Cold Turkey, Focus Me and Forest. With the proliferation of social media platforms and devices vying for our attention, a growing number of people are looking for ways to help them resist the urge to continually check notifications and scroll through social media feeds. This has seen a surge in popularity this year of an approach to productivity called monk mode. This involves dedicating yourself to a single task with no tech or other distractions. The term has gone viral on TikTok where videos marked with the hashtag monk mode now have more than 77 million views, up from 31 million in May. Miss Allegre credits the Freedom app with helping her focus on writing her book, a work of non-fiction appropriately entitled Freedom to Think, which was published last year. Ironically, my book is precisely about the challenge of focus in the digital age and the way tech is designed to engage with our minds and interfere 
with our thought process, she says. Switching off from social media and the internet in general is not easy though, says Grace Marshall, an author and productivity coach. She points to the numerous studies in recent years that highlight their addictive nature. You get a ping on a device and it creates an open loop, says Mrs. Marshall. Our brain wants to close that loop by looking at the notification because we get a dopamine, a natural chemical released in the brain that makes you feel good, hit when we close that loop. Miss Marshall adds that interruptions from work emails can also be problematic. I think it should say be problematic there because can also problematic doesn't make any sense. So just here, there is a mistake by the BBC. It says can also problematic. It should be can also be problematic. Tech is instant with emails and apps like Slack, Microsoft Teams and messages. Often people feel like there's an exception to be, sorry, an expectation to be instantly responsive. She believes that in order to protect people's work-life balance, workplaces should establish guidelines around expected response times to messages or emails. It's not just about the focus and productivity aspect. It's also about the mental health impact, says Miss Marshall. The founder of the Freedom app, Fred Stutzman, says he got the idea when he was at university and found himself spending too much time on Facebook and not enough time on his dissertation. The app now has more than 2.5 million users around the world. He says it's not some sort of failing of our human capabilities that so many of us can't resist constantly checking our social media feeds. Meta, the owner of Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, employs hundreds of PhDs and behavioral scientists to make the app more stimulating. That's not a fair fight for the average person. Mr. Stutzman adds that he is pleased to use technology to push back against technology. Freedom says it saw a big jump in users during the pandemic, with downloads jumping by 50% in 2020 and 500,000 new users joining in 2021. The social media sites that are most blocked are said to be Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, now x.com. If you don't want to reply on apps to boost your focus, Mark Shannon, a productivity and mindset coach, advises making small changes in your daily routine to begin with. If you want to create change and habits, make the behavior tiny, he says. If you don't want to watch YouTube, create other habits that are good for you. Being able to manage distractions is key. After you sit down at your laptop in the morning, ask yourself, what is the most important thing for me to complete today? And listen to that answer. Vladimir Drutz, co-founder of Focus Me, believes social media addiction should be taken more seriously. Society focuses on drug addiction or gambling. But I think a lot of time we don't know we are addicted to our devices and our digital crutches. Mr. Drutz sees monk mode as a movement against an increased desire for instant gratification. A lot of the stuff in the zeitgeist today is, hey, get rich quick. Make your millions in an instant. Monk mode is a necessary contrast to say you're not going to accomplish anything unless you carve out the time every single day and just show up, he says. In future, with the rise, I think it should also say in the future, in the future, with the rise of artificial intelligence, the distractions from tech are only set to increase, adds Mr. Drutz. AI is just increasing the amount of content that's out there. We're going to see exponential growth of apps vying for your attention. Monk mode is definitely going to be gaining steam. Okay, so a, a really fascinating article and one that relates a lot to me and no doubt relates to many of you listening to this video as well. I actually decided probably 
about five years ago to completely delete my Instagram, Facebook, and other things that I was using to consume content. So unproductive apps, because I found that I was just wasting so much time on unproductive um, scrolling through Facebook, Instagram. And also I found that I was not giving my kids the attention that they deserve because I was distracted by these very addictive apps. So I decided that I need to make a change. I need to delete them. But you're probably thinking, well, Tom, you're you're on YouTube now recording videos. Well, yeah, I find that so long as I'm using social media for productive things, so I'm either educating my students or I'm learning myself, then that's fine. But if I'm doing unproductive things that are just simply wasting time, then I shouldn't be using these apps. So that's my own view. I'm really interested to hear your views and... Um, do you feel that you use social media too much? Are you doing anything about it? Are you using one of these apps to block your social media apps for a certain period of time? Get, get, um, get replying in the comments below and I'd love to have a discussion with you about that. Anyway, let's go through some of the words that I really liked in this article because there's plenty of them. Um, I can't go through all of them, but let's go through a few. So the first one is enables, enables, that's from the word enable. Um, so that is to give someone the authority or means to do something, make it possible for. For example, the evidence would enable us to arrive at firm conclusions. That's the word enable or enables. Willpower, what is willpower? That is control exerted to do something or restrain impulses. For example, most of our bad habits are due to laziness or lack of willpower. That is the word willpower. Contactable. Contactable. That is to, uh, is to be able to be communicated with, especially by phone or email. That's contactable. Distracted. Distracted, unable to concentrate because one is preoccupied by something worrying or unpleasant or maybe something enjoyable like social media apps. For example, Charlotte seemed too distracted to give him much attention. That's the word distracted. This is quite a tricky word, but a beautiful word. Proliferation. Proliferation. That is a large number of something. So, for example, stress levels of high, forcing upon them a proliferation of ailments. So it could be a rapid increase in the number or amount of something, a continuing threat of nuclear proliferation, for example, or it could be a rapid reproduction of a cell part or organism. For example, we attempted to measure cell proliferation. But in the context of this article, it's a rapid increase in the number or amount of something. That is the word proliferation. What is work-life balance? Work-life balance, the division of one's time and focus between working and family or leisure activities. For example, he needs to get his work-life balance right. That is work-life balance. Habits. Habits. That is the plural of the word habit, uh, and that is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. So, for example, he has an annoying habit of interrupting me. That is the word habit. And then finally, we're going to talk about instant gratification. What is instant gratification? Instant gratification is a term that refers to the temptation and resulting tendency to forego a future benefit in order to obtain a less rewarding but more immediate benefit. That is instant gratification. Anyway, it's been a very, very long video, so I'm going to wrap up there, but would love to hear your thoughts and comments and feedback on today's article, a really fascinating article. And uh, I hope to speak to you soon in the comments. If not, I will speak to you again tomorrow with the next video.